Welcome to Design to the Nines. I'm Natalie Callahan, and if this is the first time we're meeting, welcome to my channel. For today's episode, I have compiled a Mac Daddy episode of all of my best spring and Easter DIYs. So get comfortable, relax, and let's get designing and DIYing to the nines. <laughs> got five way cool dirt cheap Easter slash spring DIYs for you. This is a new series that I've started where the goal is to have a very designer looking decor piece that's around $10 or less but has a high-end finish and if you watched last month's episode the very first project I did was this really awesome love sign with the metallic gold. I just loved this piece. It was definitely one of my favorites. Now at the time I said to hang on to this because there was a backside. And for our first DIY, we are going to be doing Happy Easter. Now you could do Happy Spring if you don't celebrate Easter. It's totally cool. We celebrate Easter in my house, so we are gonna be doing Easter. Now even though I'm going to be using a Cricut machine to complete my project, for those of you who do not own a Cricut machine, I have not forgot you. I've got a printable all ready to go that you can use to transfer this exact image onto your wood round. So whether you have a machine or not, you can do this project. Now, if you stick with me to the very end, I'm going to promise you three things. One, you're going to have a lot of fun, or at least I hope you will along the way. Number two, I'm saving my favorite project till the end. And three, all the way through, I've got several free things for you, even up to the end. So you're going to want to stay tuned so you don't miss out on a thing. Let's get started. I start out by painting the back of the round in a concoction of blue paint that I stirred up myself and didn't end up liking it. So once it dried, I painted it in Waverly chalk paint in the color pool. Now we're gonna go into Cricut Design Studio and we're just gonna put in Happy Easter. Now the font that I am using is called Nocturnal and you can download that for free at defont.com and then you can have that on your computer and then Cricut Design Studio will pick up that font and you can use it in there, so that's really good. So then once we've got our sign situated how we want, we just go in and we get our vinyl ready. Now I picked up this gold vinyl and some of you might just decide to cut the vinyl and call it a day um, but I really am in love with this metallic pure gold by folk art I really like the way it looks so I'm not gonna be using vinyl today and this is removable even though it's like almost the same color it's kind of funny it's very close but this is just not as warm the vinyl's not as warm so we're gonna be using this as a stencil but I, I know that I'm gonna get comments of why don't you just go ahead and use the vinyl well because it doesn't match the gold that's already on there and I really love the warmth of this this gold and so we're gonna go ahead and just use that paint today. If you don't have a Cricut, here's the process. Take the printable I provided in the description box below and lay it on your round. Place graphite paper underneath and trace the lettering. It will transfer onto the wood, then you just hand paint it in the gold color. If you are using a vinyl cutter, now it's time to apply your stencil. And then we are going to do a layer of the original blue color over the stencil. Now this is the same technique I use to stripe my walls and the reason I do this is when it bleeds, it bleeds the original color and inevitably most things bleed, <laughs> especially if there's any kind of texture at all. So this is just a way to avoid some of the bleeding and once that blue color is dried, we'll go over and do two coats of our gold to just get a really nice pure gold color. And then when that's dried, all we need to do is pull up the vinyl stencil and it is done. I am super happy with how this turned out, this Easter sign. And if you look at this, we've got love. We've got Easter, so we've got two for one. You can't beat that because now it makes this wood round cost go in half. So originally it cost $6 for this wood round. And by doing it for two holidays, that saves you a bunch of money, dual purpose, 
love it. I did blue because it kind of coordinates with all of the other colors that I've got going on, but you can really do any pastel color that you want. All right, so for my next DIY, we're calling it a mini Easter cloche. I actually have a couple of different ways that I'm gonna go about this. So you're gonna have a couple of different options here. So just hang with me and I'm gonna explain it all. Almost all of these items I have gotten from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm not a big Dollar Tree crafter, but if I can make it look pretty darn good, then I'll go with that. So here's what I've got planned. So I came across these candlesticks at the Dollar Tree and I thought that they were awesome. I loved the way they look. They're pretty beefy for a Dollar Tree candlestick. So I snatched up like five of them and then I got like three in white <laughs> because I haven't seen these a whole ton in the stores. And so I wanted to make sure I stocked up. So hopefully you can find these in your store. You can also find similar stands to this in the unfinished wood section at Michael's with a 40% off coupon, it will still be extremely affordable, maybe a couple of bucks. So I've used those ones before as well. So then I found this glass. It was curvy and not super flat on the bottom. Flipping that over, it fits perfectly into our candlestick. And there you have a mini cloche, but I'm not gonna leave it alone like that. But you could also put it in bottom down and it also makes a beautiful hurricane. So there's that option as well. Now making the cloche, there's usually some kind of knob or handle, not always, but usually there's some kind of decorative knob on top. Well, you could go and use a cabinet hardware pole. If you're a perfume lover like myself, I've, I've kind of whittled it down to like one favorite perfume that I wear most of the time, and that's Princess by Vera Wang. I really love that one. Usually the perfumes come with really pretty bottle toppers. And so instead of using a cabinet knob this time, I have this left over from one of my perfume bottles. So that means it's free and we're upcycling it from our perfume bottle. And I thought we could just glue this to the top of our cloche like so. And how pretty is that really? and it's so high-end looking and you would never tell that these things are from the Dollar Tree. Then I went on a hunt for a mini bunny. At the Dollar Tree, they had these little kid ceramic painting kits. I thought that the bunny was really cute. Now we're gonna have to take off the topper very carefully out of this bunny and you could just leave it white and do something with it just like this and that would be really cute but i have the tiniest little bit of cement spray paint left over from a project last fall and i thought it would be kind of fun to give it a cement look and then we might go back on top and add in a little bit more white and we'll just have to play around with it but i thought it would be fun to make our little bunny stone like then we're going to just put in a little bed of moss that we got from the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna just put some of that in the bottom of our candlestick. And then we'll set our bunny on top of it. We might even add a little greenery and other things to make it feel a little spring-like, maybe a few little flowers. And then we'll put our cloche top on and there you have it. Now again, you could do this entire process doing it with the bottom down and just the hurricane and do everything else exactly the same and that would be super cute. I'm actually really surprised at how much I love how this turned out. I also, as just kind of a little added bonus, I took one of my little Easter nests from last year's DIY place card holders and just set it on top of another one with a little bit of extra greenery that I had on hand. So that's just kind of a little side thing. This is not the focus of our project. Our Easter bunny looks really legitimately like a cement one. Now, I don't think that that has anything to do with the cement spray paint that I used. Honestly, I wouldn't recommend it just because I feel like to get the real cement look, you have to take it through some extra steps. So you'd be just as good as using a gray paint or gray primer. So we're in this one, two, three dollars ish, give or take a little bit for supplies. And it is really cute. So next time you're thinking of throwing away some of those empty perfume bottles or beauty products and they have a cool top on it, hang on to it, you never know when you might need it. So DIY number three, we are doing a moss bunny sign. Now, if you remember this sign from my last month's 
way cool dirt cheap episode. I did the number 14 for Valentine's Day. Well, Valentine's Day is over. And if you remember, I just stuck these on here with some little glue dots. So in theory, we should be able to pull these off super easy. And we're gonna use the frame from that project to do our spring themed picture. So this is gonna turn out to be very versatile. And I have a feeling that it's gonna reoccur Every time I do a Way Cool Dirt Cheap, who knows? <laughs> I might shake it up here and there, you never know. But if you missed last month's Way Cool Dirt Cheap episode, I'm gonna tell you how to prep the wooden frame, which is actually a wooden canvas that I picked up at Walmart for $4.97. And fl I just flipped it over to the backside where I painted the interior part white and the exterior frame part black, and then I slightly distressed it. Last month I used some glue dots to attach my number 14 and they ended up being way stickier than I thought that they would be. So I ended up having to kind of sand this down and do some touch up painting just because of how sticky the glue dots were. Now I picked up this moss sheet at the Dollar Tree. They're kind of hit and miss. So if you see these, grab them. You can find moss sheets a lot of different places, but this one was just a buck. And it's actually the perfect size to fit right inside our frame. I've got a printable for you of a bunny and you're gonna print it out and we're gonna use that as a template. And we're gonna cut out our moss sheet. Now, anytime you are working with moss, you're just bound to make a huge mess, so just know that. Now, since our glue dots were kind of a fail, we are going to attach our mossy bunny using mounting putty instead. And just attach this temporarily to our sign because you never know what we're gonna use with this little sign next. So we don't wanna make it permanent. I just think this is so cute. So I put a little plaid bow on our little bunny. It's so cute. So this was $5, but we've now used it twice, so that drops it down to $2.50. We used a sheet of our Dollar Tree moss for a dollar and some extra ribbon that I had on hand. So you really can't beat that. We will be able to use this frame over and over and over again. Just don't use those glue dots. They work a little too good. So next up, we are going to be doing a carrot and pom-pom garland. I'm excited about this because if you remember from a couple months ago, I made giant pom-poms and put them on pillows. I put them on a throw blanket and I showed you how to make them. I bought a set of these pom-pom makers and in that set was this little itty bitty pom-pom maker and I think that this is the perfect project for that. I picked up this green yarn from Michaels and it was on sale. I don't remember. It was just a couple bucks. We probably won't use hardly any of it. I thought it would look really cute with these carrots that you can find at the Dollar Tree. To make the mini pom-poms, you take out one side of your little tool. You're gonna wrap it back and forth on your little maker until it's almost full in the center. And you're gonna do it again on the other side. Once you have your maker closed, then you're gonna take some scissors and snip them until it's like this nice fuzzy thing. Then you're gonna take another piece of yarn and tie it really tight in the center. Then you can pop open your pom-pom maker and you have a mini pom-pom. I am gonna be using some of this jute twine that I picked up at the Dollar Tree just because it's a little bit sturdier than the yarn, a little bit stiffer, so I think it will hold the weight of everything a little bit better. And I kind of like that natural rustic feel, especially since we're kind of, we're kind of doing a very like farmhouse feel with a lot of these very springy, earthy feeling. And then we're gonna just rotate the pom-poms and the carrots. I use the excess pom-pom string to tie them onto the twine and cut off the excess to blend in with the rest of the pom-pom. I use the twine to tie the carrots on and just as a little added reinforcement, I used a little tiny dot of hot glue on each carrot. We have our adorable carrot and pom-pom garland. This was only a couple of bucks and you can make it as long as you want. I am obsessed with it. We're gonna go ahead and put this on our last DIY, my favorite, the Peter Rabbit sign. 
you're gonna wanna hold on to your seats, maybe even keep a towel close by because you're gonna break a sweat. No, I'm just kidding. This is probably like the easiest DIY. I almost can't call it a DIY. I've made it so easy on you. Now, if you remember from last month's Way Cool Dirt Cheap, we made this I love you sign and it is so cute. I have just been loving on this for all month. I'm loving my love sign. If you have a 16 by 20 frame lying around your house, or maybe you can find one at a thrift store for really, really cheap, we're now reusing this from last month's project, so we will probably reuse this frame multiple times depending on the season, at least that's my plan. So just reuse a 16 by 20. I don't put the glass in it just because I, I feel like it looks more art-like or sign like without the glass, but you could totally put the glass in. That's just a personal preference thing. So this is how easy I've made this for you. What you're gonna do is you're gonna need to download this adorable print and I provided the link below. Isn't it so cute, this Peter Rabbit? Unfortunately, this won't meet the criteria for printing it out as a color engineered print. So you will have to print this technically as a poster. Now you can do this at Walmart for $9.86, which gets you right underneath that $10 if you have the frame on hand already. Print it in a matte finish. You get your print and you put it in the frame and boom, you're done. We're gonna take our garland from DIY project number four and just kind of stream it onto the picture frame and the carrots with the Peter Rabbit with the orange and the blue. It's so springy and so cute. And you're welcome for it being like the easiest DIY ever. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If you're interested in getting this print, the link is in the description box below. But for under $10, and you've already got the frame from last month, this is super cute. This would look great in a nursery. It would also look really cute for a baby shower, and it's definitely cute for your spring and Easter decor. I have three spring Pottery Barn dupes, so let's get started. My first dupe is the Arrow Vine Baskets. Now, they no longer carry this on their website, but they were really cute, so this will serve as dual duty. If you like these baskets, I'm gonna show you how to make your own since they no longer carry them. But when they originally did carry them, they ranged between $40 and $60 per basket. I'm going to be attempting to make the larger basket today. And fortunately for me, I already had everything on hand. Now my husband's always saying, why do you need all this crafting stuff? Well, because right now I can't go out shopping because we're doing social isolation. And so it's perfect. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this basket and this is from the Dollar Tree. And so $1, very affordable. And I really like the shape of this. This is really great. And also the mesh on it will serve as a really good opportunity for us to attach our grapevine. Now I have this leftover from a fall decorative pumpkin project that I did. I ordered this off of Amazon. I believe it was about $7.50. I'll also provide a link for one of these in the description box below. We are going to be using it to wrap around this basket and as our handle, which brings us to our handle. Now I didn't think that this grapevine would be quite strong enough in and of itself. I wanted to give it a little bit more substance. So necessity is the mother of invention. So what could we do to add support to our basket handle? So I went looking for an old wire hanger from the dry cleaners and we are going to try to be making and fashioning some support for a handle with this and we'll combine it with a grapevine so it will have a nice look. But this wire hanger should hopefully add a little extra stability for our handle so you could actually hold it by the handle in theory. So that's what we're going to try to do with this. So I start out by untwisting the wire hanger to separate it and then I unbend it and shape it into a U. Then I hooked one side onto the basket and twisted it on. Now I don't know if this is a good idea or if I should have just waited but it ended up working out fine in the end. I cut a long enough piece of the grapevine wreath to fit on the hanger. and slide the hanger through the middle of the grapevine and then securely fasten it on to the other side. I 
I add extra wire where it connects to the mesh basket to make it really sturdy. Then I start wrapping the vine around the mesh basket. And once I have it basically in place, I strategically wire it to the basket. As I go, I remove some of the existing wire that holds the grapevine together so I can loosen it up and kind of spread it out a little bit. I use the original wire from the grapevine and I cut it into four pieces. I use that to wire it to the basket. Now that I have it basically how I like, it's time to add moss. Also, I've got my cordless Mac Daddy hot glue gun Sure Bonder. This comes in a mini, which I'm gonna be using today, but I am loving this glue gun because it's cordless, so it, the cord doesn't get in the way of your crafting, and then you just put it on the base and it charges while you're not using it, so it is awesome. I have so loved that, and the link for that will be below as well. Next, I randomly place the glue and moss sporadically around the basket. I cut off a little bit of boxwood that I had on hand and strategically placed that around the basket. Now this is not on the original one, so this is totally optional for you, but I thought it looked really cute. Then I took it outside and I sprayed it with a couple of coats of hairspray just to make sure that everything stayed in place a little bit better. Now I wasn't going to do the arrangement originally, but I decided to go ahead and do it last minute so it would match the after pictures a little bit better. So I didn't get footage of this process, but I literally just had these daisies on hand and found some extra greenery and I kind of threw it all together last minute. It was easy peasy. And to be honest with you, I actually like my version better than the original and their version was $60 and mine was just 11 and would only be around $9 without the flowers. So what do you think of it? So for my next knockoff for spring is a tulip place card holder. Pottery Barn sells a set of four for $30 and we are going to be doing ours for a tiny fraction of the cost. Now fortunately I'd already purchased these things because when I see them I like to stock up on these tiny little pots. They are so cute. You get three for a dollar. That makes them 33 cents each. And then I have some tulips left over from my last episode's project. And I think that they're gonna be perfect for this project. And they're about 50 cents each. Then we're gonna use again some of our moss from Dollar Tree. We won't need very much. And then I also have some scraps of styrofoam left over from my last episode. So these are like the bare bottom, but you don't need much because these pots are pretty tiny. From my last year, place card holder. I I just went and yanked them out for this project so that I didn't have to make new ones. And I, even though they're easy, I just hot glue them in. So if I wanted to go put them back in it, all I'd have to do is glue them back into place. That's all the supplies. So let's get putting it together. This project is ridiculously easy to put together. You start out with your mini pot. You need a small amount of styrofoam and you place it in the pot so it's nice and snug. Then you take two tulips and cut them about an inch below the base of the leaves. 
Then you put two tulips in one side and then again on the other side. Then I put some hot glue down on the foam and take a chunk of moss and fill it in so you can't see any of the foam. Then I take my pre-made wire from my last year's place card holders and shove it in the middle. All I did with this was kind of take some wire and make a curly cue and then straighten it out on the end. It's a pretty easy process if you look at it. Also another solution for you is to take the bottom section of the tulip. It also has a wire in it that slides right out and you could definitely curl that in the same manner as the ones that I used and basically have a free version. Again, I like mine better than the original. I like the pinker version of the tulip and I think these are just really amazing. And at only $6 for a set of four versus 30, it's got a better price to boot. But what do you think? My last Pottery Barn knockoff for spring is Peter Rabbit napkins that I saw over at Pottery Barn. The regular price of these were $40 for a set of four. We're gonna be doing ours for pennies on the dollar. So I created this printable right here. I found this image on a royalty-free site, so there's no infringement of copyrights or anything on this. And so I've got this for you. I'll provide a link for it in the description box below. And I've gone ahead and printed it on some iron-on image transfer paper, which I actually used in my Easter Bunny pillow recently, so I had some leftover, didn't have to go to the store. All of the things that I'm working with, I already had on hand. So I had some pillow covers that I had cut and not sewn yet on hand. So even though they were a couple of inches small, I went ahead and used them because they were the right kind of fabric. If you needed to purchase fabric, I would recommend just using some simple muslin. Mine were cut to 18 by 18 inches, but once they were sewn down, they ended up being around 16 by 16. Just for a point of reference, the original finished size, I believe is around 20 by 20 inches. I hem the edges on my sewing machine, now you could always use pre-made napkins and I definitely would not judge you, but I find making them myself saves me a ton of money. Once you have them all sewn or purchased, then we cut out our printable, which was printed on that image transfer paper that I mentioned earlier. Then you got to peel off the backing very carefully. It's a little bit tricky, especially on the butterflies, but it's doable. I like to pull mine off using a pin. Then I warm the center of the bottom of the fabric for about five to six seconds. Then I lay down our image right in the center and then place a sheet of paper over it and iron it for about 40 seconds. Now I use my easy press. It just makes the job so much easier, but you could definitely use a hot iron as well and just follow the directions on the package. While mine is not an exact match as I typically like, I am overall really happy with the end result here and definitely happy about the huge savings of $40 versus $3. But what do you think? So what do we do if we have a little extra time on our hands? Well, if you're like me, then I open up my laptop or turn to my phone and I go to Pinterest and look at all the beautiful things. And then after that, I hop on over to YouTube to learn how to make them, right? <laughs> That's why I hope you're here today. I've got three Pinterest inspired DIYs for you. So let's get started. For my first Pinterest inspired spring DIY, I've been seeing all of these cute bunny scapes on Pinterest. I've seen them with a wreath of greenery around them. I've also seen a garden scape kind of a look. And what's really great about this is I have 
had everything on hand already. I didn't have to buy anything. I had this stone like cement Easter bunny that I picked up at Ross last year for $5.99. These are pretty easy to find. You can find any kind of bunny you want. Then I have this pot left over from my heart topiary tree. I made two and I only ended up making one heart topiary. And all I did is I picked up this pot. It's plastic. It's black. And I picked it up from Walmart for like $2.96. So very affordable. And then what I did is I took a terracotta pot. You can see like a saucer and it was about a dollar. And I took some black chalk paint and painted that and then glued it on just to give it more of a high end finished look. And so that was really easy to put together. And then these work on my tablescape as well. So the one thing I, I kind of toyed around with doing it like this and put some greenery, but this is a little tiny bit too small. So I don't think I'm going to do that direction. But what we're going to do instead is we're going to create kind of like a nest effect by setting around the rim of this and then we'll kind of build like a garden scape. So then I have a whole assortment of leftover greenery that I had on hand. I have a whole assortment of Dollar Tree white flowers that I used on my Easter tablescape last year. And then occasionally you just need like the top parts of flowers, right? So I have these leftover greeneries. I think that using all of these greeneries together kind of creates a gardeny effect. And normally you would maybe toss some of these greenery away. I've got a paper bag and I'm just gonna kind of tear this apart and, and crumple it into a ball. We're going to take that off first. <laughs> We're going to shove this into the bottom of here. It's just so we don't have to fill the entire thing with styrofoam because that is wasteful. I have some leftover green styrofoam from another project, but I'm going to take my hot knife because I have it on hand. We're going to cut it down and we're going to put it inside here so that this is pretty stiff. So this will give us a solid base for our bunny to sit on top of. <laughs> and my husband is walking by all weirdly. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, I think he was trying not to interrupt me. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to make the cut or not. Do you want me to? Creepy. <laughs> Just kidding. He's not. This hot knife is actually a very handy little tool. It cuts through foam so easily and it's not very expensive either. If you're interested, I'll put a link in the description box below. I use it to cut the green styrofoam down until it fits snugly into the pot. It needs to be quite tight to support the weight of the bunny. I fill any gaps with any extra and make sure that those are snug as well. Then I take my Dollar Tree wreath and place it on the rim. I don't do anything to secure it because I figure all the greenery will kind of hold it in place, but you definitely could if you wanted to. Then we start adding in our greenery. Try to place it in as you might see it in nature. You want to mix the different type of greenery together kind of in a ring shape. I then place the bunny to see how it looks. Peekaboo. <laughs> okay, so I felt like the bunny was too far down, so we put another square of styrofoam that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and had on hand already to lift it up a little bit more. So we're just gonna place that here. Now, when I move this around to like where it's gonna have its final spot, I'm gonna take the bunny off because I'm not gonna permanently attach the bunny here because I may wanna reuse them for something else down the road. Plus there's a lot of weight on here. So now that he's sitting in here, I'm gonna fill in with a little bit more greenery. So basically I rated all of my supplies and I'm like what can I use so I can not have to spend any money on this project. The different variation in greenery is really what's going to give it this awesome garden effect. Now we've got kind of a good little foundation going and I thought you can never go wrong with fairy lights so we're going to add some fairy lights in before we add a whole bunch of other stuff because I think that that way it will kind of disguise it a little bit better. Sometimes if you turn on the lights, it helps you place them a little bit. This is a good opportunity to make our focal point and we're gonna put this, I think, right in here. Then I fill in with a few more of my leftover Dollar Tree flowers. Now I'm going to add some Easter eggs and I've also got some carrots and we're going to just kind of tuck them in and see how they look. So we're just going to do a few finishing touches here.
My second Pinterest inspired DIY are these modern tulip arrangements that are arranged in these cylinder vases. Even though they're kind of being described as a modern arrangement, what I like about this is they really could go in many different styles of decor and tulips always are very springy to me. So my microphone wasn't turned on during this section so we'll be doing a little bit more voiceover. You definitely could do this arrangement with fresh tulips but I decided to do this with some silk tulips that I ordered off of Amazon that have an amazing and very realistic look to them. They are actually even prettier in person than on camera. I ordered 30 of these in bulk off of Amazon, making them less than 50 cents per stem, which I thought was an amazing deal. And they have a multitude of colors, so I will put the link for these in the description box below. I start out by taking a glass vase that I already had on hand. Now, if you want to use the Dollar Tree cylinder vase, you definitely could do this, but this one's a little bit larger, and I thought it would work really nicely for this project. I picked up some black smooth stones at the Dollar Tree and I placed a few of them on the bottom of the vase. Then I go about arranging my tulips, staggering the heights of the tulips with my tallest being in the center. Now you can arrange this however you like, but this is just the approach that I took. Once I get them basically arranged how I like them, then I'm going to mix my fake water kit. I mixed the whole kit and ended up not needing all of it and so I wasted a lot of it because once you've mixed it it's going to dry hard so you can't really reuse it. So if you're going to be using a Dollar Tree vase for example you definitely need much less so you can just make sure when you mix those that you do equal parts and save the rest for another project. So for a Dollar Tree one I think you'd probably need about a half a this size package. You will mix the water kit for about three to five minutes, making sure to follow the directions on the package. Now, when you pour this into the vase, you want to avoid the side, so aim for the center. Once you have your fake water in, you can carefully replace your tulips back into their spot and you can move them around a little bit, but you want to try and avoid moving them too much. Otherwise, you might get some of the epoxy on the side of the vase and that's not a good idea. <laughs> then you can just set your arrangement wherever you like it and let it harden. I want to briefly tell you about Antique Candle Company's new fragrances that they sent me, which are Country Pear and Mango Citrus. Both of them smell absolutely amazing, and Mango Citrus might be one of my favorites of all time, and it's a brand new scent. If you're interested in purchasing these absolutely amazing smelling candles, I'll put a link in the description box below. So for my last Pinterest inspired spring DIY, we are gonna be making some Easter bunny tags that you've been seeing all over. I'm sure you've seen these type of tags all over Pinterest and I just, I liked them. I thought they were cute. And so this is a very inexpensive project. Now I got most of my supplies at the Dollar Tree and you know me, I'm not a big Dollar Tree DIYer unless I really think that I can get a good look out of it. Now you can find these chalkboards at almost all Dollar Trees. They're pretty readily available. Obviously that's gonna vary from store to store, but I've seen these in multiple stores and they generally have them on hand. I thought that they were a good size. They were lightweight. I figured that we could cut through these without too much trouble. Now, if you're not big into celebrating Easter, you don't celebrate it, that's okay, because you can actually switch this out really easy by writing spring and doing like a daisy flower on it. So it's really flexible. You can get a spring look with this and that's the purpose of this episode is to show you how you can get your inspiration from Pinterest and make it kind of your own and what's also awesome is you could make them reversible if you wanted to so I marked where I wanted to make my cuts including where I wanted my hole to go as well. Then I simply used my miter saw to make the cuts. Now, if you don't have a miter saw, you could use a handsaw. This is just quicker for me, and so I like to use it. 
You know my motto, girls can use power tools too. Then I took my half inch drill bit and drilled a hole. I made sure to put a piece of wood underneath it to protect my bit and the table that I use. I designed a printable, which I will put the link for in the description box below, that says Easter in two different fonts and also a little bunny. I used some transfer paper to get the image transferred onto our boards, but I would almost suggest you use the chalk method because of the blackboard. It did work out, but you wanna make sure you have pretty bright room if you're going to do it this way. Then I simply take some white craft paint and I use some inexpensive brushes from the Dollar Tree. Now, I don't know if I'd recommend these, but they did get the job done. After they were dried, I distressed them as much as I could. They didn't distress as well as I would have liked, but it is what it is. <laughs> After they were distressed, I used some rope that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and kind of did a slip knot on it and then tied a knot at the top so that they would hang like tags. Now, if I were to redo this project in the future, I probably would just use unfinished lumber, especially since I ended up needing to use my miter saw anyway, because I think I would have gotten more of the look that I'm going for. So stay tuned for that. Plus, I think it might be a little cheaper this way, especially if I use it, my scrap wood that I have on hand. That being said, I did think these turned out rather cute. I hope you're enjoying what you've seen so far. I've got a lot more coming, so stick with me. I am Natalie, and I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> I'm going to be doing a thrift flip, and I'm starting out by continuing my endless mission to find a good thrift store. I have had the worst luck if you've been following my channel, but my friend Lisa clued me in that I might have a little bit of luck at a thrift store that I didn't know about that was actually really close to my home. Wouldn't that be funny if all this time the best thrift store was really close to my house and I totally overlooked it. I have something in mind. We'll see if I can make it happen. So we're almost there. Wish me luck. so excited this is probably one of the best thrift stores I've seen since moving to Orlando and I haven't even finished shopping here so I'm excited do you see the smile on my face this is the smile of success who knew this thrift store is literally just a few minutes from my house I didn't know it existed and as you can see I've got some stuff in the back I'm pretty excited about. Now I'm not going to be making over all of these items on this episode so you'll have to stay tuned for those coming up but I'm going to be doing something with those lamps. So I looked at this base of this lamp and I actually saw a lamp post. It looks just like one. It's like a column. You could technically leave it this color or not. So I thought it would be fun to do an outdoor street lamp on a smaller scale. I had another episode. If you haven't seen it yet, you'll definitely want to check it out after you check out all the other amazing goodness. I did a DIY lamp post for Christmas and it was like a big tall one. We are going to convert this into a a solar powered lamp. There's a lot of options with this project so let's get making over the lamps. If you like this kind of project let me know in the comment section below because I have a lot of lamp post ideas. For some reason I'm on that kind of kick. The first thing we're gonna do is we need to take this lamp apart. I gotta stand up I'm kind of short. Okay so we'll take off the lampshade and then obviously we got to take out the light bulb. It's not plugged into the wall and that's just how you want it. How many people does it take to unscrew a light bulb? You gotta be careful you don't wanna break these kind of because they can cause a lot of problems, but supposedly environmentally friendly, so just as long as they don't break. So then we gotta take off this harp. So I then just untwist the light socket until it's undone. And then I decide to just cut the wiring and pull it out the bottom, leaving just the base of the lamp. This includes the felt liner on the bottom of the lamp. Hat? I don't think so. 
Now I'm all about repurposing and reusing, but unless you guys can tell me a good reason to hang on to this lampshade, I think I'm gonna check it because I don't even like the shape, so it would have to be a pretty creative idea. So if you've got one, let me know below. So I've kind of gone back and forth and back and forth and back and forth on this and I still haven't made a decision. But there's already texture on the lamp so I have a flat black matte spray paint. But I thought it might look cool to add a little more texture so I also have a hammered black. So hopefully I make the right call here. I'm going to start with the flat black because I figure it will be kind of like a primer. And if I'm not happy with it, then I'm gonna resort to this one. And these are both by Krylon. So we're just gonna start spray painting these. Now, if you're not lucky enough to find a column lamp base, go ahead and substitute it out. Aren't these already looking so much like lamp posts? Now, I ended up going with the matte black and it's actually not very matte in my opinion. I definitely would put it in the satin to semi, but I really did love the spray paint because it coated extremely well and I could turn it in different angles and the spray paint still came out. So I really like it. I didn't end up going with the hammered finish because I felt like the lamp had enough texture after all. So we are gonna really take it to the next level on the street lamp look. I scoured high and low, looked at my local home improvement stores, and finally ended up on Amazon where I found a two pack of uh, solar powered lamp post light right here. And I'll put the link for this in the description box below, but I thought these were perfect. So they don't require any electrical wiring, which I love, but will still light up as long as they are charged by the sun, which in Florida here, we have a ton of that, so <laughs> we're okay. Now it comes with this square and my lamp's round. And so that looked to me a little funny. Fortunately, the bottom part does pop off and so we can get rid of this. The problem is, is when I get rid of this, it makes it a little bit wobbly on here. So my thought is I will take a little hacksaw and try to cut this off because this part does fit nicely onto our existing dowel and it will be nice and snug. So I'm gonna try cutting that off, but if it doesn't work, we'll brainstorm some ideas. So I'm just gonna try, this is my $1 Dollar Tree hacksaw and this is just plastic. So I really think that we can cut through this. Success. <laughs> so we can push that back into here, line it up, push it in, okay, which is perfect. So now it will fit on this really well. Look how cute that is. I have some liquid nails just a little bit left. I thought I had more of this. So hopefully there's a little bit in there just so it's a nice permanent fix. And that's it for the lamppost part other than charging up our lanterns outside in the sun. Now these could look really cute on a dining table or just somewhere in your outdoor decor. But I thought we could bring up the spring and summer vibe just a little bit more. So meet me outside. I'm gonna show you what I've got in mind and it's gonna even add just a little bit extra. Because of all the beautiful weather, I am getting the bug to kind of spruce up my pool area here. It really does need a makeover and I do want to do that pretty soon. So one of my ideas was, as I picked up this pot from Walmart for about five or six dollars, and then I got this one at Dollar Tree for one dollar. <laughs> and I spray painted this in the same black as I spray painted the lamp posts at the same time. And I thought we could take some liquid nails and glue these together to make a kind of urn style one, except for at a huge discount because this is $5, this is a dollar. So we've got like six or $7 into this. Whereas you could easily spend on an urn this size $30 without batting an eye. So this is a huge saving. So I thought 
might start out by putting some sand into each one of the bottoms. Not a whole lot, but just to add a little weight. It will also help with drainage. And then I'm going to put some potting soil on top of that. <laughs> it kind of looks like brown sugar. <laughs> Okay, so my plan is to put our lamps right in the center of this and to give it a little added support, I have these little dowels left over. It's just to help it from not toppling over. It's not really, I'm not gonna attach it to it. I'm just gonna stick it down in the center so the lamp doesn't wanna move around and topple. So for a little spring flare, I've got some greenery and some violets. I think they're technically called violas, but I've called them violets my whole life because they were my grandma Ruth's favorite flower because her middle name was Violet. And so these totally remind me of my grandma Ruth. I've talked about her on this channel before. She obviously had a big impact on my life. And so I'm gonna plant these in here. It's gonna be a little snug fit, but I think that that's okay. And we will just kind of nestle those down. I actually might pull this out, plant them towards the edge, and then put that back down in there. But then it will give it that kind of spring and summer feel that we're going for. Now I picked this up at Walmart for, I think this is $2.50, and the violets were $1.12, so very affordable. We've kind of planted this around the edge and that looks so pretty. I love it. Now we're gonna take our lamp post and very carefully moving the vines out of the way and any flowers out of the way, place this into its spot. All right, I'm gonna water these. Even though I worked in a floral shop that had a nursery in it for a couple years during college, I tend to kill things in pots. So if you all would just take a second and say a prayer that I don't kill these. Amen. I'd appreciate it. So just for the solar powered lamp post, I ended up spending about $30 a piece. Adding in the potted urns and the flowers was approximately another $15 each. But for the impact that this gives, I think this is a crazy good steal. I am totally in love with these, slightly obsessed, and I am so looking forward to making over my patio and pool decks in the coming months to go with these lovely little ladies. So what are you thinking of this episode so far? Stick with me, I've got way more designs coming up. I have this heavyweight canvas pillow cover that we are going to alter. I've had this for a while, but I also found some inexpensive ones that you could also use off of Amazon, and I'll put the link for that below. And it has a zipper. It's a little bit lighter weight than this one, so I may try to find a heavier duty alternative on Amazon as well, just so you have that as an option. You could make a pillow cover from canvas or drop cloth and that would work really great as well and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by folding it in half so we can find center this is a little trick that I always use to always find center and then we're gonna take a straight pin and we're gonna pin it just to mark we're actually not gonna leave the pins in it's just so we know where our center is and I've marked both the top and the bottom. Now we're gonna take some painter's tape because we are actually gonna paint some stripes on this pillow and we're gonna line it up and try to find center of the painter's tape with the center of the pillow and tape from top to bottom. And you might wanna do the backside as well. I'm going to, but you don't have to. That's optional to you. But I think the idea of the stripe going all the way around 
makes sense. So we're gonna tape that off. So I'm going to be using some chalk paint to paint on this pillow. And I debated back and forth between Waverly Celery and Waverly Moss. Both of them are very beautiful, muted green. One's a little bit lighter and one's a little bit darker. And ultimately, I think I'm gonna go with the moss just so that it's a little higher contrast. I don't know. <laughs> I really kind of like the celery, so we'll see what happens in the end, but I, I, I think I'm gonna go with the moss. But you could pick whatever color matches your decor. I thought about doing like a navy blue. I thought about doing several other colors. I think green often acts as a neutral, so it can go into a lot of different types of decor. So that's why I am selecting the green. So I hope you can follow me along on this process. I start out by taking some regular blue painters tape and making a stripe right down the center of the cover, making sure I go on both sides all the way around. Then I take some washi tape and tape on either side of that center blue painters tape. Then I do a second stripe of washi tape right next to the first one. Unfortunately, the washi tape didn't really want to stick to my canvas pillow cover, but that's what I had on hand and I knew that I could still make it work I just need to be a little bit more careful and while we're talking about the pillow cover <laughs> I totally should have ironed it beforehand that was a mistake on my end but I it still ended up working out fine in the end but I probably should have ironed that now that we have the tape on either side of the original blue painters tape in the center we can remove the center piece and move it to the outside of the washi tape I hope this is making sense. <laughs> if you watch what I'm doing, I'm hoping that that will help you. What we're trying to do here is create a French stripe. Then we remove the second stripe that is just next to where we pl just placed the painter's tape. Then we can take that piece and move it onto the opposite side and repeat the process until we have one wide stripe in the center and two smaller stripes on either side. Then try to push down the tape as firmly to the fabric as you can get it. Again, my washi tape really didn't want to stick, so I had to be strategic about how I went about painting it. But now it's time to paint, and I ended up going with the Waverly Moss chalk paint color. I started by painting straight down or away from the edges of the painter tape, not towards it. Once you get one side all painted, then you're gonna allow that to dry and then flip it over and repeat the process. In between this, I just take the aluminum foil that I had my paint on and wrap it around my brush to keep it wet for the short time that it took to dry. This worked out fine for me. Once it's dry, then you can remove the painter's tape and you will end up with this. While this is drying, we're gonna work on the next layer of this pillow. So I wanted to create a layered look, so I'm gonna be doing this next layer with a vinyl iron-eyed adhesive with my Cricut machine. If you don't have a Cricut machine, don't worry, I've got you covered in the next step. I'll let you know how we're gonna overcome this step for you. I just like the idea of layering it and I think that the vinyl will be a little easier for me in the long run. So I went into Cricut Design Studio and I designed my lettering and it says Happy Easter in French and then another French saying that I don't really know what it means. But it's an Easter saying and if you know how to speak French then hopefully you can interpret it for the rest of us. But. I can't even pronounce it, I'm not even gonna try. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut it on my Cricut Explore Air 2. And I am just using gray vinyl. If you do have a Cricut machine, I'm gonna provide a link to the file that's already ready to go in the description box below and you can click on that and just go ahead and hit make it and you don't have to redo anything. Once you get your vinyl cut, go ahead and weed it. I don't know why, but I really love doing this. If you don't have a vinyl cutting machine, here's how you're gonna do the lettering. I provided a printable here that you can just print out, and then I would take a piece of graphite paper 
like so and put it behind and then you'll lay it on your pillow and then trace it out and then the image will be on your pillow kind of in a pencil format and then I would take a gray paint pen or even just some craft paint and hand paint it on your pillow and just add to the layering that way so you can definitely get this look without having a vinyl cutter that's how you're gonna do it. Now we need a cute little Easter bunny to kind of complete the look. And I've purchased this Jolie's Boutique transfer sheets. It comes with some for light fabric and some for dark fabric. Since we're using canvas, I've decided to go with the light fabric one. And all you're gonna do is I have a free printable and I'll put the link for this as well as the printable in the description box below. And I've got this cute little guy. Isn't he so cute? Anyway, so you're gonna just print this out on the transfer paper. Then you're gonna to wanna to cut out your bunny. And once you're done cutting out your bunny in as much detail as possible, now it's time to add the fun stuff. But a couple things that I've learned, I think that if I were to do this again, I would have gone with a lighter. I do like this, but I think that the lighter one would have worked a little bit better. Now we're gonna attach our vinyl and our printable bunny. This is where it gets really exciting. Okay, so we've got our vinyl. We gotta wait a few more seconds for our easy press to finish warming up. Now, if you don't have an easy press, you can easily just use a hot iron. And it sounds like our easy press is ready to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna warm up our surface for 15 seconds before we apply it. So we're gonna just kind of press down. 15 seconds and make sure your paint is really dried at this point. I think it will be okay. Okay, so that's been 15 seconds. We're gonna take our iron on and line it up. I am just eyeballing it, to be honest with you. So this is nice and hot. You can see the steam coming off of it. I don't know if that's good or not. So after warming it up, you're going to press it at 340 degrees for 40 seconds, allowing it to cool mostly, but not all the way before removing the clear protective layer. Next, we're gonna pull off the backing of the bunny, being very careful to not stretch it out on the edges. Then we're going to cover it all up just so it doesn't stick to anything. I'm sure it's probably fine. And then we're gonna repeat the same process as we did for the lettering. happy with how our cute little Easter bunny pillow turned out. We are going to be making a pink peony wreath and I am making this peony wreath based on my love for peonies and I've had people correct me and say it's peonies and so I think it just depends on where you live or where you're from. So some may say peony and some may pe say peony. Whether you say peony or peony then this tutorial is for you. Last Spring, I made a pink peony arrangement. You can kind of see it right back here, even though I've added a few extra flowers since then. It was one of my favorite projects last year and you guys enjoyed it too. So I thought that for this spring, we would do a pink peony wreath. And as you can see, I've got quite an assortment and I'm gonna kind of go over this in just a second. This is just a great fine wreath that I had on hand from another wreath that I kind of just took apart and am going Going to be reusing you can pick them up for about three or four bucks you can find them pretty much anywhere what I wanted to do is have kind of an assortment of color and size within the pink peony range I found this bush of pink peonies at Michael's and it was 50% off and I think that made it um, about six dollars for the bunch or around there and it's this really light pastel pink, which is really beautiful. But I wanted a little hint of like bubble gum and hot pink in it. So I also picked these up at Walmart. Something fell somewhere. <sighs> Story of my life. <laughs> 
So back to what I was saying. I found these bubble gum and hot pink peonies and I thought they were really pretty at Walmart. And they're $3 a stem and you get the big one with a littler one on the stem. And I thought that, that could bring out some nice dimension through using different color. And then also at Michael's, I got this little bunch. Now this one's kind of a little bit more expensive. So this would be optional for you. And this is $14.99, but I got it 50% off. So it was $7.50 for this small bunch. But I liked that this bunch was smaller and that will add a little bit of a size variation within our wreath, which I think will look really interesting. And it was kind of in the middle of these two so it's definitely not as light as this one but more in like that true bubblegum pink and we'll probably use some of the leaves off of the stems as well for the peonies but I also picked up this variegated stem at Michael's and I just thought this really had a spring flare to it I love variegated greenery and I thought this would be a nice touch on a wreath let's get started if you haven't already discovered the Sure Bonder glue guns, I highly recommend them. They are just so awesome. They're cordless, so that makes them easy to work with. And then I also pair them with Gorilla Hot Glue, which is awesome and it just works so well. They are not sponsoring this post, but I have put an affiliate link in the description box below if you're interested in learning more about them. I use the mini size, but I also own the standard size. So depending on the size of your project, you can adjust accordingly so we just start out by placing our peonies on the wreath for the most part I try to use a couple of inches of the wire stem that way I can push it down into the grapevine wreath and put a little dab of hot glue on each stem so that they kind of stay in place if you're doing this for outdoors you really want to do this step um, if you're doing it indoors you don't need to because it's not gonna be moved around if you're doing it outdoors you're kind of opening and closing the door door and you want it to stick into place. To give it more interest, I try mixing up the sizes and the colors and the direction that I put the peonies in at. So some I'll put in at one direction and then I'll place it on a different angle going another direction and this just will give it more interest and also we want to kind of spread out some of those colors so if we've got some of the hot pinks you want to put them in different locations and kind of spread it out throughout the wreath. This is pretty much the same with the greenery as well. Since we got two different types of peonies there were two colors of peony leaves so we try to break those up and of course we also add in our variegated greenery which I just absolutely love what that brings to this wreath when it was all said and done I had a couple of holes so I had to take a quick trip to Michael's and they were out of single stem peonies and I'm guessing it was because they were having a buy one get two free sale which is awesome but I did find some pink cabbage roses that pretty much look identical to the peonies so I got those and added them in and you really can't tell the difference at all When it's all said and done, I'm totally obsessed with this wreath. I cannot stop staring at it. It screams spring to me, and I'm really looking forward to having it as a part of my spring decor. Now that we have a gorgeous pink peony wreath, I thought it would be fun to make a wreath stand. Now I might put my wreath out on my front door, I haven't decided yet, but I wanted the option to display some wreaths indoors. Sometimes you just want to store your wreath inside where you can admire it all day and this might be one of those times because I really like how our wreath turned out. So I decided that I needed a stand to display my wreath on and we are going to do this very inexpensively and I'm going to be using stuff that I had on hand, leftover from other projects and then I picked up a couple of very inexpensive things. First I was able to find this spindle and it's an outdoor spindle, 
for an outdoor deck and sometimes those can be pretty rough but this is actually not rough at all really so this was a dollar 98 and I picked it up at Lowe's it's a little too long so we're gonna cut it down now I'm gonna be using my miter saw just because it's quicker it gives a really nice cut and I have it on hand but before I bought my electric saw I used to do everything with a miter box similar to this so if you don't have a miter saw you can totally pick one of these up I'll provide a link below in my description box but I got this off of Amazon for $12 comes in really handy especially for things like this you will get a little bit of an arm workout but you can't go wrong with that <laughs> it can get a lot of these type of projects done very inexpensively so let's go build our stand right on cue my safety glasses went missing but we still need to protect our eyes so so I'm looking stylish in my sunglasses and this will get the job done. We've got our spindle that was $1.98, such a steal. And I've got my hook, which wasn't that great of a deal at $2.98. I feel like I could have gotten better, but when you need something, you need something. So I spent the $2.98, but look around, you probably can find a better deal on a hook than that. So we're gonna set it right at the base here. And then I'm gonna make a mark right at the top here. And that's where we're gonna cut. And you can see that that made a really nice cut. We're gonna hang on to this because you never know what you're gonna need it for. And then we're gonna cut off three inches from the bottom just so we have it the right size. Now we wanna build a base. So this is gonna be the bottom part. And then I have a whole assortment of scrap pieces of wood that we're gonna use to kind of assemble this. This is why I hang on to scraps that are about this size because you can use them for little things like this. My original plan was to use a Dollar Tree sign that I had on hand, but I decided that this was gonna be a kind of a pain to deal with, especially when we're gonna be painting. I thought it would possibly peel back a little bit easier, and it didn't, and I just don't wanna mess around with it, especially since I remembered that I had this scrap piece of wood, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and use this instead. And I think that we can get the exact same look without having to mess with it, and with the added benefit of it being much heavier you can see that I've actually marked where all the centers are and all we're gonna do is take our drill and pre-drill make sure it's all lined up because this is gonna be the bottom and I don't want it to wobble I'm gonna just take my countersinking bit and countersink this so that way the head of the screw will go in all the way and then it won't wobble. With my wood pieces in a pyramid shape and pre-drilled holes, I take a three inch screw and screw it all the way through all of the pieces and drive it right into the bottom of the spindle. For added support, I put in a couple of finishing nails, but you really don't have to do this part. Just make sure the screw is really tight. Originally, I do the same process for the top pieces, but this time only using two smaller pieces because I originally planned on using a leftover finial from a broken curtain rod, and I was just gonna glue that on top with some E6 6,000 but then I decided it was just a little bit too big and I found the most beautiful knob with rhinestones at Hobby Lobby and since the knob already had a screw in it I put in a couple of finishing nails on top and then took the new knob and screwed it down into that original hole and then of course I attached the hook that we will use to hang the wreath on and to finish it all out, I taped off the knob to protect the rhinestones and I spray the whole thing with two coats of Rust-Oleum's Oil Rubbed Bronze Spray Paint. I am obsessed with my peony wreath. I'm also obsessed with my DIY wreath stand. So cute. I mean, a $2 spindle and scrap wood. So this was a pretty simple project to put together. The wreath is beautiful. The peonies are beautiful. So what do you think so far? Are you liking this? Let me know in the comment section below. I found the most beautiful pink 
peony arrangement. It was so pretty and I looked at the price tag and it was $369. You heard that right, $369. It was so expensive and I just know that I would never personally pay that because well, I can make it myself and I want to teach you how to do it too to save yourself a little bit of money. So what I liked about the arrangement was the beautiful vase that it was in. It had a beautiful crystal vase with like a little stem on the bottom and then it had these beautiful pink peonies. I love peonies. They're some of my favorite flowers. Peonies and hydrangeas are two of my favorite flowers. I just love them. I love the way they look. They're so romantic. But at $369, I was like, we can get that look for less. So I thought that this would be a perfect dupe, especially with Mother's Day right at our front door. This would be an amazing Mother's Day gift, or even for your own home decor. It's beautiful. Pink peonies are amazing. So I'm gonna put all of my supplies in the description box below. All Everything that I use will be there, so you don't need to worry about that. Now, I had this vase on hand. I really lucked out. I had found it at a Goodwill a couple of years ago. I paid about $2 for it, so it was super cheap, and I had it on hand, and it was about the right size, and, and it had a similar design on it. So for me, this is perfect. So go into Goodwill or your thrift store. You'll find tons and tons of vases there. It can be hit and miss. Then I got this um, candlestick from the dollar store. And I did this already because I wanted it to be really set up for this video. Is I took some E6000, glued the candlestick to the bottom of the vase. And now we have a very similar style vase to the one from Pottery Barn. And what I've done I bought two bunches of pink peonies off of Amazon and they were $18.99 for both of them which is really good price because they were pretty full sized um, bunches and the quality of the pink peony was super high. It was really, really high, beautiful peonies. But then I knew I needed a little bit hot pink because if you look at the original inspiration piece, there's a couple of more intense hot pink peonies in that arrangement and what made it nice is that there was a great big mixture. So I went over to Michael's and I got these and they were having a 60% off sale. So they're originally $5 a piece and this was 60% um, off making them $2 a piece. So that is a really good price. All we're going to do is it's just a mounded arrangement. So I, I've taken my wire cutters and pre-cut all of the bushes apart and shortened all the stems of the ones that we're going to be using and we are just going to place them in and just create a nice mound. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you do some variation of height just very subtly because what uh, makes a really nice design mount is when there's like variation of heights. around and make sure it looks good on all sides so we'll just make some adjustments here and if one's too long then just take it out and clip off just a little bit at a time um, that way you don't overdo it what I like is that I have some of these little tight buds mixed with some that are kind of medium and some that are fully blown just like you would with a real peony I am so excited about this so you want to disperse all the colors and the textures and you can see that there's varying heights of the peonies. Some are poking out a little bit more than others. Some are tucked in a little bit more than others. And that gives it just kind of a more natural, fun look. So overall, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Now that we've got it arranged the way we like it, what we're going to do is we're going to lift this out and put it in another vase or pitcher or something that can kind of hold the shape while we work on the fake water. Okay, so all we're going to do is I'm going to sacrifice this. I got this at the dollar store. If you have a plastic cup, 
that will work as well. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use this entire amount of water. What you're gonna wanna do is mix equal parts and they say on the package to kind of do it down the side so it helps with the air bubbles when you do it this poured in this way. We wanna get all of it, the contents in and it has to be equal, otherwise the curing time will take longer, might create more air bubbles. So while we mix this for three minutes, I was just wondering if there are any other things you would like me to do about there, any designer items that you would love to see me do. If so, let me know in the comment section below. I'm always looking for ideas of things that I can do for you guys. It's time to pour it into our base. Now, as we pour it into our base, um, we want to be very careful to avoid the sides of the vase because if so, it will get on the side. So we're going to aim for the center. Also, you want to make sure that it's clean and free of any water or dust or anything because anything that's in there will be in there for good. So we're going to pour our fake water in very, very carefully right in the center. So now I've tried this with an epoxy before and it just takes so much epoxy and it's just not as pretty so you really want to do stick with the water kit now we're going to very carefully gather our bouquet out of the temporary container and we're going to gently set it in make sure all the stems are inside the vase and then just very carefully set it into place now it is a little bit of a little bit forgiving so if everything doesn't pop right back into place we're just going to make a couple of modifications before it sets up because it actually takes about eight to ten hours to cure so we've got a little bit of wiggle room you don't want to move it too much you know just because you can make a mess out of it but you know pushing things in or making small adjustments that's quite all right so i am really excited with how this is looking overall this was less than 36 dollars So excited about this because every holiday season I think everybody goes online and looks for ideas and kind of to see what sounds good and what looks good to them and I kept seeing a common theme of these bunny dishes they are so cute I found a couple of sets one from Pottery Barn and one from Williams Sonoma that I loved I loved both of them I thought they were adorable and then I looked at the price and I was like hold up how much and it was between 50 and $60 for a set of four plates. And I was like, no, nope, nope, nope. Especially when I need like a set of eight to set my table. I'm gonna show you how to do it for less than 10%, about $5 for um, a set of four plates. And you're gonna have made them yourself, so you're gonna be so proud of them. And they're gonna be cute, and we're gonna do this. So let's get started. Here's how we're gonna go about it. I'm gonna give you like a general idea and then we're gonna start. So I've got these clear plates that I got at the Dollar Tree. And then I have a set of four royalty-free hand-painted bunnies that I've printed out on my printer. We're just gonna start by cutting them out and then we're gonna decoupage them on and then we're gonna paint some cool designs now I don't know if you can see it in the background here but this is my um, pottery barn version and this is my Williams Sonoma version they're so cute what we're gonna want to do very first well let's move our cute little bunnies out of the way for just a second because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our plates and we're gonna peel off the sticker and then it came off pretty good but there's a little tiny bit of debris and just to avoid debris and fingerprints and all of that we want it to be very clean so I just have a cotton pad and some rubbing alcohol and we are going to just clean the back of it that dries very quickly now on the our inspiration piece there's a kind of a 
brown banding around the edge. Just very subtle detail. I've got a paint pen here from Craftsmark. I couldn't find the color name on it. We're going to use this for the edge banding here. This is the first thing we need to do is do the edging because we can't have it mixed with anything else. So you, you shake it and you get it on there. And then we're just going to go around and we're going to hit up the edge. You can kind of see that it has a lip. We're just very carefully moving the plate, not the marker. It's okay if it's a little imperfect, but we're trying to try to get it as even as possible. We're gonna let this dry. It doesn't take very long at all. And um, while we're letting it dry, we're gonna cut out our bunnies. I love these bunnies. These are so cute. Stay tuned to the end and I'll tell you where, you can, where I got these ones. But honestly, you can go and find whatever bunny you want. I've got my little kid craft scissors, that's fine. You can use whatever you want. It doesn't have to be like uber perfect cutout job, but just cut as close to the edge as you can. So we have our cute little bunnies all cut out. They are so cute. I am so in love. Now this is dry. Now we can decoupage our bunny on. Which one should we do? Hmm. Well, let's try this one. This is very important. You need to get dishwasher safe Mod Podge. If you don't, then they're not gonna be washable. If you want to wash them, you've got to use the dishwasher safe Mod Podge. So make sure that you get that. We are gonna um, put some Mod Podge on the front of our rabbit. Enough that it'll stick, but not like blobby at all. Before it dries, very carefully, because you don't want to rip the paper that's already wet, we're going to bring our plate over, and we are going to try to center it, or just place it where you want, where you think, so he touches the bottom, and then his face will show. So we're gonna start at the bottom and we've gotta be careful around where it bends um, so that it doesn't crease. You just kinda of work with it and work out any um, kinks. And if a little bit hangs off the edge of the plate, that's okay because we'll just trim that up later. More, we're more trying to get this to lay nicely. On a plate that bends, totally adorable but we're gonna leave it upside down to dry and then um, once it's dry we'll give it like an hour or two we'll come and put another coat of Mod Podge on the back end before we start applying any paint okay so our Mod Podge has dried look how cute these are now we need to do a coat on the back side so we put it on the front side, now we're gonna put it on the back side. And what we're gonna do in this case, I am just gonna go just outside the cutout and make sure that the cutout itself is covered thoroughly. And then we're gonna let it dry for another hour or so. So this is gonna take a little bit of time, um, but it's going to be so worth it. This is where it gets all kinds of crazy, all kinds of fun, and all kinds of messy. If you have a manicure, it's toast, but you'll earn one after you do this and you can feel good about it because of all the money you saved. So, okay. So I got this stencil at Michael's for, it was originally $10. I used a 40% off coupon, so it was $6. We can use it for all of our plates. And it's from um, Martha Stewart collection, and it's an ECOT. Um, so we're gonna use this to kind of mimic the pattern in the Williams Sonoma version. And it works out really great. So, but it's gonna be messy, I'm not gonna lie. 
So we just lay it down on the plate and where it bends, we're gonna have to push it down kind of like this. So we may start from the top and then like work our way back and then you're gonna have to fill in a couple of holes here and there and I'll show you how that goes. So again, we're gonna use this um, whispering turquoise as our kind of um, blue. Hopefully it's not crazy intense, but it will be fun. So we'll start up here and we just get it wet, dab it off a little bit. You don't want it too wet because then it will leak. And we are just gonna try to do this. And what's nice about this e-cut pattern is it's already kind of naturally messy. And so if it's not perfect, it's okay because it's e-cut. You want it to go on a little thick while not being runny, only because you're not gonna get a second chance to put on a, like a second coat. You can kind of touch up a, a couple of spots here and there, but generally speaking, this is your one, one shot. So we're gonna take this up and there's gonna be a couple of bare spots. So we're gonna just randomly take, um, so we've got like this outer corner thing and uh, some of these, and I am just gonna randomly place to fill in a hole that just looks a little too big. By nature of using a stencil, it's gonna get a little bit messy and there might be a couple of spots that you want to go in and clean up. So what you're gonna do is dip a Q-tip in some rubbing alcohol and very carefully just go clean up the couple of areas that you may need to clean up. And then we're gonna let these dry, clean up our messy fingers and we'll be back to finish it off. Now we need it to pop. So we're gonna just paint white over the entirety of the back part. And I'm just gonna brush this on with some chalky craft paint, but you know, you could also take some spray paint and spray that on and that would work out good as well. But this is what I have and so that's what I'm gonna work with. We need a brush. <laughs> well, I'll just use this one. I was gonna use a foam brush, but we'll just use this one because I have it available. So you want to cover the entirety of the back. Make sure you cover the paper. It just adds one more layer of protection on the piece of paper that we mod podged on. And you're probably going to need to do two at the minimum, possibly three coats to get that really nice um, bright white. That's it. And then we're going to let it dry for a couple of hours. We are almost finished. <laughs> I know this is like a lot of passive time, a lot of drying time. The part itself of painting isn't too terribly long, but it's all going to be worth it in the end. Now we've got our two coats of white on and now it's time to seal it because if you want this to be washable, want to even throw it in the dishwasher, I don't know if I'll actually throw mine in the dishwasher, but if you want to throw yours in the dishwasher, then you're going to definitely want to do this step help it preserve for a long time. So we're gonna pull out our dishwasher safe Mod Podge again. We're gonna do two good coats of this on the back and let it fully dry. Okay, so it says we need 28 days for this to cure, but if we don't have 28 days, we're gonna try out a little hack on that to see if it will work out, but uh, by using the oven. So I'll meet you back here in a couple seconds your time and a couple hours my time. We are done. Our plates are so cute. Would you love these on your table? I've got a couple of them. Classy yet fun. I am so excited for Easter to be coming and I just love all the things on Pottery Barn but they're really pricey. You can get the look for less without spending a fortune and people will think that you got it there all along. My first dupe is on Pottery Barn they have these really adorable mini nest place card holders. Now I'm going to dupe this today and what I've gotten is I found these picks 
at Michael's. Now in the original version, there is three eggs. You'll notice this one only has two. I was fine with it, but if you really want the three, they did have the three as an option. It just was a little bit more money and I thought, well, two is fine. This one is originally $4, but half off, it was $2. And the one with three eggs was $6 or $3 a piece. Let's get started with this one. First, all we're gonna do is clip off the back of this pick. You're left with this really cute nest. Now, we need something to put our name card on, our place card holder. So I bought um, some jewelry wire, and the reason why I went with the jewelry wire is this is a little bit heavier gauge, but it has a prettier finish than the floral wire. If you have some heavy wire around the house, go ahead and use it. You can always spray paint it if it doesn't have a pretty finish. But we're just gonna clip off a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out with a pin and I am gonna start curling it. Grab the needle nose. And we're just gonna keep curling it because we're just gonna make a little swirl in which that we can put the name card in. And then we're gonna put a little bend gonna see I think we're gonna it looks up like about three inches and then we're simply gonna just cut that off and we're left with this little curly cue we're gonna just put a little hot glue on the bottom here we're gonna shove it down in between the eggs and we'll hold it for a second to let it set up and <laughs> that's really it there, once the glue sets up then we can put our little name card in it and we have so easily duped the Pottery Barn version. My next project, I am so, so excited about. This probably might be the one that I'm most excited about, which were these moss covered rabbits that they have on Pottery Barn. They're really adorable, but for 80 bucks we can do better. So I originally found these two smaller bunnies um, for they were originally $7.99 at Hobby Lobby half off were $4 a piece and I was just gonna do them but then I found a mama bunny at Ross for $8 now they're more about this size the ones from Pottery Barn but I thought you know even like the little ones that you could still get the same look and on the backs of them they had like little um, ivy growing off of it now the ivy was really tiny and I couldn't find an ivy that was tiny enough that I really liked. But I found this bush at Hobby Lobby and it was $6.99 half off, so $3.50 for this bush. And I think that it will work for all of them, it will be enough. And I'm gonna start in the babies first, so I'm gonna set Mama aside for just a second. We're just gonna cut apart this into little tiny sections. And all we're gonna do is hot glue it on. So this is gonna be another very quick project where we're gonna have massive savings. The Pottery Barn version, they had some greenery on the head and on the back and little strategic spots. So we're gonna start by gluing this on the back. A little dab up in the ears where you can't see very good. And we'll hold that into place for a second. And like all of these, projects are a little hot glue, a little cutting, so easy. You guys can totally do this. Hold it in place for just a second. So while we're waiting for the glue to dry, why don't you let me know what kind of projects you'd like to see me do. We'll just keep working at it until we feel like it has a, a good look and we'll keep referring to our Pottery Barn example. Okay, so I am done with my bunnies. I'm so excited with how these turned out. They're so cute. Huge savings, okay? So like the big one would have been about $80 at Pottery Barn and this was less than 10. And now I'm gonna start on my last project which is some bunny burlap napkin holders. Now this is one that they used to have at Pottery Barn like last season still think they're cute and they have an updated version of it on their website right now that's gold 
but I, for my table, I wanted the more natural version. So I've taken some burlap here. I have it left over from another project and I have some toilet paper rolls. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna measure it to one and a half inches. I'm gonna just make marks all the way around and then we're gonna connect them so we know where to cut. And then I'm just gonna take a box cutter here, a sharp one, and cut on the line. So if it's sharp, this should not be too hard. And the reason I didn't wanna do scissors was because I didn't wanna pinch it or create a crease. Okay, so we cut this to one and a half inches. And then we're gonna take about a two and a half inch by six inch um, piece of burlap, which I'm just gonna kind of eyeball. What you need is a little bit of overhang on each side and enough to wrap around the roll. We are going to just put some hot glue on the middle part of this, enough about an inch and a half wide because we're gonna stick our toilet paper holder piece and glue it on very carefully in that one spot and then we'll just roll it in. And then to finish it off, we're gonna just put another line of glue and close that seam. So it's completely glued on. We'll let it set for a second. And then we're gonna put hot glue on the inside rim just roll it and put the glue in and then we're gonna tuck our unfinished edges in all right so you would never know that this was a toilet paper holder now we've got to make the ears okay so we've got a three inch by eight and a half inch piece of burlap that we're gonna make bunny ears out of so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this in half lengthwise. About an inch in the middle, we're gonna do a line of glue on the edge here. And then we are going to press that down. Now, I, I've i been using these pliers because I don't, I burned my fingers a couple times. So instead of burning my fingers, I'm using my pliers to kind of stick it down because the glue kind of squeezes through a little. But now that we've glued it in half lengthwise, we're gonna fold it in half the other direction and do a nice crease. Right in that crease, we're gonna add some glue to glue it together. So now you can see that we've kind of got some bunny ears going, but these are rough like square edges and bunny ears are pointy. So all we're gonna do is cut just the shape of bunny ears at the top and there you go. And then you have bunny ears and now we're gonna attach it. And I'm gonna cover up the seam with another bead of hot glue. Stick this down. You're gonna have to hold it while it sets up but it's really that easy and we're gonna be done with our little project. All the bunnies, the, the place card holders, and these napkin rings, we're getting the same kind of look, but we're saving a boatload of cash. There it is. So super cute. Hardly any money basically in my case it was free but you had to buy a little burlap it, you wouldn't need that much and it would be super cheap and we have adorable bunny napkin ring holders it doesn't really get much easier than that and we've saved probably hundreds of dollars on these things you can do this too i know you can all the designer knockoffs all the Pottery Barn, Williams Sonoma, and all of those things are gonna be on our Easter table. So let's get started and let's set our table. Okay, before we get too far into this, I'm just wondering what you think of my dining room table makeover. I am so happy with how it turned out, but let me know in the comment section below what you think about the before and after now that you get to see the whole thing. If you've watched any of my tablescaping videos before, you know that I have kind of a process of how I go about setting my table. And usually it starts out with a crisp white tablecloth 
But this time I wanted to shake things up because I have a lot more natural elements that I'm bringing in for Easter. And so this time we're starting out with a linen tablecloth. By now you certainly know that I love to use wrapping paper on top of my tablecloth. And the one that I've selected today I got at the Dollar Tree. And I just loved it because it had kind of like that natural craft paper look, but it had little flowers on it that were in white, but it was really subtle, kind of like a nice little textural nod to spring. And I just love it. Let's put it on. Just barely enough for my really long table. I also like to add an additional runner. Again, it's always about layering and adding more texture when you are tablescaping. In my Thanksgiving poolside tablescape, I'll put the link above, I used a burlap runner and I'm going to use that again. The one I did was outside and my table's longer in here, so I'm gonna make another one. So it looks like I had just barely enough and the end is kind of wrinkled so I'm going to go iron that real quick and then we'll put it back on. Okay so one of the really awesome things about tablescaping is just like with our burlap runner you can sometimes reuse things. You know I probably won't reuse the wrapping paper because we'll get stuff and drips and spills on it but the things like the tablecloths and the runners and things you can reuse them just put them with different decor and get a totally different look. Okay, so for my floral centerpiece, this was super easy. You can totally do this. What I did was start out with a trifle dish and a wide mouth mason jar. And I put that in the center and then I filled just some Easter eggs, speckled Easter eggs that I got at the Dollar Tree. Now they came in with um, purples and yellows and pinks as well, but I only opted to do the blue, greens, and whites because it kind of matched my decor already. But I love all the pastels and that would look really fantastic on your table if that works with your decor. As far as the flowers, I have a few flowers in here that are super nice that I have around my house all the time and I bend them and just reuse them and make it work. And then I mixed them in with lots of bunches of white flowers from the Dollar Tree, probably like seven or eight. And I just, I didn't even cut them off the bushes. I just shoved them in and kind of intertwined them a little bit. And honestly, it's just a mounted flower arrangement. It's super easy to do. Seven or eight bushes and then a couple of nice flowers that I had are from around the house. And bam, you have an awesome centerpiece for Easter. I don't know if you recognize this tray, but I featured this in my Valentine's tutorial. It was filled with the little tea lights. Well, I went to Michael's and got some of this grass mat and cut it down to fit inside of it. And the grass mat was like um, regularly $10, but Michael's is always having like 50% off or 40% off coupons. So I was able to grab this for $6 because it was on a 40% off sale. And I also grabbed these other little speckled Easter eggs um, from Michael's as well. They were $3 a bag. I think I got, did I get two bags or one bag? I don't remember. But they were $3 a bag and they are so cute. So we're gonna put that right down low in front. So on my last episode, you will remember that I did a dupe of Pottery Barn's, um, I think they're called Bunny Ivy Topiaries or something like that. These look a little bit different than what I showed you, but I kept looking at it and I felt like it was missing a little something extra. And so I actually happened to have some of this um, greenery on hand, this variegated stuff, and I decided to add it on and it just really took it over the top and it really added that something that I felt like it was missing. I got it on a clearance sale, so I probably didn't pay more than a dollar for the greenery and I've added it to all of our moss bunnies from last tutorial. So we're gonna put them on now. You'll notice on this one, I ended up placing it on a little cupcake stand just to give it a little height to balance up with the other side. So we'll just them in here. I love these little bunnies. They're probably one of my favorite knockoffs. 
just to balance things out with the other side weight wise I've got this little sign at Ross that says hello honey bunny anyways I thought that would look really cute on our tablescape so I just wanted to add a few finishing touches I've got a whole bunch of these moss like covered stone things that I got at the Dollar Tree and I we're just gonna scatter them in here and just fill it in a little bit And then I also have some of these extras of the speckled eggs, so we're gonna just place them strategically through. Okay, so on Pottery Barn, I saw the most adorable wood charger plates, and I knew that I wasn't gonna spend $40 a piece. So I found some chargers that had like a wood look to them on dollartree.com, and honestly, truth be told, they looked a little bit more wood-like than they are. I mean, you can see the grain, but these ones are definitely more gold. And I was going for more natural, but I think it's gonna work. And I debated about whether or not to even use them because I have like kind of a double charger thing going on. So I'll show you what I mean in just a second, but let's get these on the table. So you'll notice that I'm only setting the table for six. I only have six chairs. I'm looking for the perfect captain's chairs. I've not yet found them yet, so you'll have to watch for that because I'm sure that will involve some kind of tutorial for you, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so I mentioned that, that I had debated whether or not to even use chargers. I ultimately decided on it because I liked the added layers, but I got these ivy wreaths at the Dollar Tree, dollar a piece, and they are the perfect size for a plate to go on top and they look like a you know a nest and we have definitely a nest thing going on so again i'm going to use both of them because i like the texture but you could get away with just using these so now it's time to set our dishes and and you'll see me use these time and time again i'm just using everyday white plates it works out great because we have those decorative bunny damask plates that we did I always find that food looks beautiful on a traditional white plate, so it works out great. I just love how the white plate is in a little bird's nest. It's so cute. Okay, so we have our Williams Sonoma bunny damask dishes dupe that we did. I'm so excited to finally put them on my Easter table. And you'll notice that I actually did them in two different colors. So this one's kind of more of like a steely blue and this is more of a turquoise. So I'm going to just alternate those every other chair. as I had hoped. Now we need to let people know where to sit, so it's time to put on our little place card holders a dupe of Pottery Barns. <gasps> Spring is in the air. All right, time for stemware. Okay, so in our last tutorial, we duped some older um, napkin rings by Pottery Barn burlap bunny ears. So we are gonna place those now. So cute. And I am just gonna place it right on the edge of the right-hand side of the plate. tablescape is done. I am so thrilled with how it turned out. I hope that you liked it too. If you did, let me know in the comment section below what your favorite element was and maybe what you didn't like or maybe what you thought I was missing. I like to hear all of your comments, believe it or not. I want to see your Easter table too. So in order to do that, you can hop on over to Facebook, to my Facebook page, Designed to the Nines, and 
in that Facebook page, there's a secret group called All Things Home Related, and you can upload your projects and share out on your Easter table successes, and I so look forward to seeing those. I am here outside of Trader Joe's today because I'm going to be teaching you how to make a beautiful bouquet of flowers. You can use this to give to a friend, to give to someone you love. You could even use it for a wedding, but one thing's for sure is it's gonna be on a budget. Looks like I'm here on a good day. They've got great selection. I'm probably gonna do something in the pinks and blues and purples and just really soft romantic colors. They have an awesome assortment of greenery that we can use to fill in. We're just gonna shop here. Their hydrangeas are only $5.99 per a bunch and I can tell you that's a fantastic price as well as their oriental lilies are only $5.99. Those are crazy good prices, so that's why I like Trader Joe's. Okay, so I wanna show you what I've decided on, and I feel honestly like I'm cheating a little bit by doing this, but I wanted to show you how easy it can be for you. So they had these little mini bunches for $3.99 a piece that I thought were really cute, so I selected three of them that I felt coordinated well together. Then I picked up some seeded eucalyptus and some hypericum berry, which I love to use in a lot of my arrangements. I just really like the way that it looks. You can find it in green, red, and white. I also selected some white stock, which smells amazing. I just love the fragrance. I like the color, and I think it will provide an additional interesting texture. So now we're gonna go check out. We'll head home, and I'm gonna put something together. We're gonna put our own little twist on it and even customize it a little bit more so it feels really, really special. We are back from our Trader Joe adventure, and what do you think of my new shelves? I just built that in the last episode, and I am so excited about it. I haven't decorated them yet. I did throw up a couple of things just to get me excited. So that makeover is coming up very soon. Have you ever had one of those days where you're like, you really need something and you can't find it and you look and look and look and look and you can't find it. I'm having one of those days, so I could not find for the life of me my floral shears. They always wander off when I need them. So I looked for a good long time and then I'm like, forget it. So I'm gonna be using my easy action clippers. I'm gonna make do with these today and I know the second I hit stop on that record button, they're gonna magically show up, right? You can relate to that, right? So you can take all of the bunches of flowers that you purchase and group them together and tie it off and, and have that be your bouquet. But since I'm adding in the white stock and the seeded eucalyptus, I just decide to start from scratch. So I start out by taking one of the larger roses and some of the status, which is what the purple filler is called, and grouping them together. And then I add in some of our stock. And and seeded eucalyptus. And I'm going to be adding in some of our spray roses with that hot pink color that's kind of variegated. It's so pretty. And they also have some really cool decorative greenery in those bouquets. One that was kind of like a purple cabbage looking type of greenery and some others that offer a really cool texture. One thing that I think makes bouquets look designer is when you have texture. And that includes having some flowers that are poking out a little bit further and some that are tucked down a little bit instead of mounting them all into one giant round sphere. The variation is what creates interest and the interest it makes it feel more designer. The other thing that's really designer looking is grouping small clusters of flowers together like these spray roses. While you do want little clusters of flower, it is nice to spread out different colors throughout the bouquet. If you find you have a little hole, just push a flower in through that and grab the stem from underneath and gently tug it down to the bottom. Then 
I do little sprigs of seeded eucalyptus throughout the arrangement, but I try to keep the stems as long as I can, especially so they can reach the water. We're trying to make it the same length. The purple little spear looking thing is called salvia. I love salvia. And I love how they pop out of the arrangement and just add a little bit of interest. One of my favorite flowers are hydrangeas and I love these little small green hydrangeas that came in the bouquets. The cluster of lily-like flowers in the magenta color are actually called alstroemeria and I love the softness that they add to this bouquet. You can see that there's a little hole, so I just tuck a little rose in to fill in that hole. I also tuck in my hypericum berry. So I try to use the floral tape, but this one is just not as sticky as others that I've worked with in the past. So in the end, I end up just duct taping our bouquet together so I know that it's solid and it's not going to fall apart. Now they do make a green duct tape, but since I'm not doing it as much as I used to in the past, I don't have that on hand. And the regular duct tape will be just fine for this case. And then I just cover it up with the green floral tape so you can't even see the gray duct tape. And then I make sure all of the stems are cut to the same length. Look at this bouquet, it's so pretty. I just love this. It, it screams spring, it's very romantic. I love it. I like to wrap my stems in tulle. And so I always have this six inch tulle on hand for flowers, for floral arrangements, but also for wrapping presents. So, you know, and tying a bow on it. So I have this handy all the time. So we can, you know, do a contrasting bright color, like a aqua color here. We could do something in the gold. Um, we could also go kind of the rustic route and do something with like a burlap and wrap the stems in burlap and that could look really nice, kind of like farmhouse chic. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this white glittery tool. It has, it picks up kind of the pinks and purples, but it's like classic white. And so I think that I'm going to use that. So we're going to wrap the stems in that. So then we're gonna add a bow and I want to let you in on a little secret. I always hit the holiday ribbon when it's 75 to 90% off. So then I have a stockpile of ribbon that I've gotten super inexpensive. But Dollar Tree also has some fun ribbons like this pink one would go really nicely with our bouquet. I may even use this one. I just like my bouquets to feel really, really special. I've done a lot of wedding bouquets and I always like to personalize it a little bit. So sometimes I'll put feathers coming out of their bouquet or something else. But on the bouquet stems itself, I like to take some like little type of bling. I've had some where I've had the word love on it and that one was really pretty. I like that one. I've done people's initials hanging from like some smaller ribbons and that's really pretty. But I had this idea. So sometimes we have broken jewelry or jewelry that we're kind of over that's not really our style anymore or things like that. A necklace, this one's kind of like a rhinestone-y star one that I thought we could glue on top of the tool and things like that. You could do a brooch, 
This is a broken brooch, so it doesn't have a pin on it, so we can just hot glue that right on. I think that one would actually be really kind of fun. Before I add my dragonfly embellishment, I add a couple of purple thinner sheer ribbons I picked up from the Dollar Tree as well. This part is optional, but I just think it adds a little bit of extra fun. I ended up spending around $25 for this large bouquet. Again, you could definitely do it about half the size and you don't have to add in all the extra flowers. But I really wanted to go over the top with this arrangement and it feels like spring in the most grand possible way. And I just adore this bouquet. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And until next time to all of my DIY Niners, bye.